So far, we have seen how to evaluate a contour integral and we have explored many different examples of contour integration. Now, sometimes it's not possible to evaluate a contour integral because uh, the complex valued function of a real variable t is kind of impossible to integrate. So, obviously, it's possible to write down many, many examples of such complex valued functions. For example, if we want to evaluate this contour integral along some contour c and the complex valued function is cosine z over z square plus 1 or if you still think that it is integrable then just add sine z with it if you still think it is integrable then just add tan z with it and up to so on we can always write down many many examples of complex valued functions which become impossible uh, to integrate with our uh, knowledge of integration so sometimes it's uh, possible to find uh, the modulus of that uh, uh, contour integral or upper bound on the modulus of that contour integral and uh, in this module we are going to explore the techniques that gives us upper bound for the modulus of contour integral our first inequality involves uh, this uh, integration of a complex valued function of real variable t uh, if uh, the limits are taken from a to b then the inequality says that the integral of f of t dt from a to b and the modulus of this is less than or equal to the integral of a to b of the modulus of f of t dt and uh, this function f of t is a complex valued function of a real variable t and it is equal to u of t plus iota v of t now let's see how to uh, prove this uh, uh, inequality so the function remember is equal to u of t plus iota v of t and this is what we want to prove that the modulus of this integral a to b f of t dt is less than or equal to the integral of the modulus f of t dt okay now let's begin uh, the proof of this inequality now the first thing is if the value of the integral is zero if we calculate a to b f of t dt and if the value is zero then there is nothing to prove because the both sides are zero and there is also equality involved in that inequality so in other words it is less than or equal to okay so this is trivial so from now on we will assume that okay so assume that this value a to b f of t dt is non-zero if it is uh, non-zero then it is going to be equal to some complex number let's uh, call that complex number r naught e raised to power iota theta naught so we just write down uh, uh, we just uh, took the polar form of that complex number now if this happens then this implies that r naught is equal to now we can just take uh, this e raised to power iota theta naught on the other side so this becomes e raised to power minus iota theta naught and the integral a to b f of t dt now since this uh, uh, value e raised to power iota theta naught is independent of t so we can just take it inside the integral and the limits of integration remains the same f of t dt so this is our first equation that we will be uh, using in our further proof okay and from here we can write it down that r naught which is equal to the modulus of r naught e raised to power iota theta naught and this is of course equal to from this star equation r naught e raised to power iota theta naught is equal to a to b f of t dt okay now this is going to be our second equation so now we are going to use these two equations okay so uh, moving on so this r naught is equal to a to b e raised to power minus iota theta f of t dt so uh, this implies that r naught which is equal to the real part of r naught since r naught is a real number 
so it is equal to the real part of itself so which is going to be equal to the real part of this okay so r naught is equal to this expression so let's write down this expression a to b e raised to power minus iota theta naught f of t dt so this is going to be equal to the integral of the real part so why this happens so we have discussed it when we were discussing the integration of complex valued function of a real variable t so we discussed this in detail that the real part of the integral is equal to the integral of the real part okay so uh, let me let me remind you why this happens so since f of t is equal to u of t plus out of v of t so if there is some other function so instead of saying f let's call it h so if you integrate this h of t dt then this is going to be equal to the integral of u dt plus integral of v dt so definitely uh, th there is iota over here so definitely the real of this integral is going to be equal to the integral of the real okay so that's the reason okay so let me remove this recall and let's uh, move on with our proof so that's uh, the fact let's call it double star okay now uh, moving on so we know that if we calculate the real part of a complex number then this is going to be less than or equal to its modulus so e raised to power minus iota theta naught f of t the modulus of this and we know that the modulus of e raised to power iota theta naught is 1 so that's why it is going to be equal to the modulus of f of t okay now uh, we also uh, know that if we have two real valued functions okay so let's call them h1 of t and h2 of t and if there is some relation between them that h1 of t is less than or equal to h2 of t for all values of t in the domain okay for all t in the domain a b then the integral of this real valued function h1 of t dt from a to b is less than or equal to the integral of h2 of t from a to b dt so this is effect from real analysis and now let's use this fact over here now we know that r naught is equal to a to b the real part of e raised to power minus out of theta naught f of t dt now this is less than or equal to so since uh, from here okay so from here the real part of e raised to power minus out of theta naught f of t is less than or equal to the modulus of f of t so definitely this is going to be less than or equal to a to b modulus of f of t d t so since this real part of e raised to power out of theta naught f of t is a real valued function and also this modulus of f of t is a real valued function so using this uh, property from real analysis we can say that this is less than or equal to this okay and uh, since r naught is equal to so from uh, the previous discussion r naught we also know that r naught is just the modulus of uh, the integral f of t dt so this definitely implies that this modulus a to b f of t dt is less than or equal to the integral a to b the modulus f of t dt so that's how we proved this property so that's our first inequality which gives us an upper bound uh, for uh, integration of complex valued functions of one real variable t now let's uh, uh, move on to this main inequality of this module which is the ml inequality so what does this inequality do so it gives us an upper bound of the contour integral for any complex valued function f of z along this any contour c so uh, let's talk about these two numbers m and l so this m is basically an upper bound for the functional values of this function f of z along the contour c not just any complex number z but uh, along this contour c so in other words if we have this complex function f of z and if we evaluate its uh, 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 this function along this contour c then 
if there is an upper bound for the functional values such that the modulus of f of z is less than or equal to m then this is the number m and l is basically the length of the contour so we know that if uh, if a contour or a path is given then we can uh, calculate its uh, length by using a very simple formula of arc length so this l is basically the arc length of this contour c so if we can calculate these uh, values m and l then uh, this inequality will give us an upper bound for the modulus of the contour integral f of z along this contour c now the proof of this involves or uh, uh, the previous inequality that we proved and the proof of this is relatively simple now let's see how to prove this thing now if we have a function complex valued function f of z dz and if we want to uh, calculate the upper bound on the contour integral then this is going to be equal to so let's let's use the definition of the contour integral a to b f of z of t z prime of t dt okay now this is going to be less than or equal to a to b f of z of t z prime of t okay z prime of t and its modulus dt so why uh, this happens because we just proved that so using the fact that okay so let me write down the fact over here so if we calculate the modulus of the integral of complex valued function of one real variable t then this is less than or equal to the integral a to b f of t and its modulus dt so using this fact we which we just proved in this module so using this fact we got the following thing now we also have the following number that f of z is less than or equal to m for all z belong to c and over here this uh, function is being evaluated on the points of the contour because we are writing down f of z of t and z of t are the points of the contour so that's why we can write down or we can use the following expression that this is less than or equal to a to b m z prime of t dt now this m is a constant so we can just write it down outside so a to b z prime of t modulus dt now we know that from our discussion when we were discussing the arc length of a contour that this is the arc length of the contour c so this is uh, l which is given in the statement so that's why we can write it down that this is equal to m l so that proves or given inequality which is the m l inequality which gives an upper bound on the modulus of the contour integral now let's uh, see uh, its effectiveness in this simple example okay so in this example we are calculating uh, or we want to evaluate this contour integral uh, the function is z conjugate the contour is c which is a circle from uh, e raised to power iota t uh, 0 to 2 pi so basically it is just this circle this is the initial point and we are moving in the counterclockwise direction okay now this is a very simple scenario and in this case we can actually calculate uh, or evaluate this contour integral but uh, let's try to uh, see if we can find uh, the upper bound of the modulus of this contour integral so in other words we want to see if this can be found or if there is an upper bound for the modulus of this contour integral now for this purpose what do we need so first thing we need is this number l which is the arc length of the uh, contour and we know that this is a circle and it's a circle of uh, radius 1 and we know that what is the circumference of a circle of radius 1 so this is 2 pi r and r is 1 so it is just 2 pi okay so uh, this is going to be equal to l and what is m in this case so m remember m is basically the upper bound on the functional values if all of these uh, complex numbers belongs to the contour c okay and in this case what is this function f of z so f of z is going to be 
z conjugate and z belongs to the contour c so in other words we can say that z is equal to e raised to power iota t now let's see what happens if we take z is equal to e raised to power iota t in this case so this is going to be equal to e raised to power iota t conjugate and which is going to be equal to cosine t minus iota sine t and uh, let's calculate its modulus so the modulus of e raised to power iota t is going to be equal to cosine square t plus sine square t which is going to be equal to 1 so this implies that m in this case is 1 so we have these two values l and m so this implies that in this case the upper bound on the value of the contour integral is basically 1 multiplied by 2 pi which is equal to 2 pi so that's how we calculate the upper bounds of the modulus of the contour integral and obviously there can be many many examples and and obviously uh, there can be examples where it's kind of complicated to integrate the function but this ml inequality gives us an upper bound for the modulus of this this contour integral so if this uh, uh, consider this contour integral and c is arc of the circle modulus of z2 and uh, initial point is z is equal to 2 to final point z is equal to 2 iota so if this happens and if we want to evaluate this contour integral z plus 4 divided by z cube minus 1 dz then it's kind of complicated to evaluate this contour integral but using this ml inequality we can find that the upper bound of the modulus of this contour integral is 6 pi by 7 uh, the proof of this thing involves calculating uh, the upper bound of this function of course we need to find this uh, uh, m so that's the difficult part in this case because calculating the arc length in this case is relatively simple so to calculate this thing we use the following uh, facts that z plus 4 is less than or equal to conjugate of uh, so modulus of z plus 4 is equal to 6 okay because uh, uh, z mod is equal to 2 in this case and similarly z cube minus 1 is greater than or equal to the modulus of modulus of z cube minus 1 which is equal to 7 and this implies that z plus 4 divided by z cube minus 1 is equal to z plus 4 divided by z cube minus 1 is less than or equal to 6 by 7 so these are just hints and uh, the details are left as an exercise for you now in this module we explored some inequalities which gives us an upper bound for the modulus of the contour integral now once again let me tell you what are the main benefits of these inequalities so these inequalities uh, are implemented if somehow uh, the exact value of the contour cannot be found whether it's uh, impossible or difficult to integrate uh, the function or somehow uh, some other properties of the function are given uh, and not uh, the function is exactly given so these kind of uh, inequalities will be further used in our discussions and they are helpful